Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to take you through how to turn Reaper into the Eclipse Record template. So, the first thing is you're going to need three pieces of software to use the Eclipse Record template. You're going to need Reaper itself, SWS extension, and Python. Now, if you don't have any of those, we have a video on our channel that you can just check out. And we're going to walk you through how to install those. Uh, so, if you don't have those, just go ahead and hop over to that and then come on back over here once you got those installed. Now, once you have those, you're going to want to open Reaper. If you've never opened Reaper before, this is important. Reaper, when it's the first time it's opened, actually creates a lot of its preference files. So this is what you should be looking at the first time you open Reaper. First thing you're going to want to do here is come over to your installer and go ahead and unzip it and open this bad boy up. Now, go ahead and come here down to the start here, read me. I do want to note, everything in here I'll kind of walk you through. So... Don't feel like you have to read this if you'd rather me walk you through it. And also, if you're on the other end and you're like, who is this guy? I hate the sound of your voice. No worries. We wrote out everything you need here. So you can just follow these instructions and accomplish the same goal. As well as at the bottom here, there's some information on those um, installers. Again, if you don't want to hop out of the other video and check out us walking you through that, you can do that right here. Uh, no worries. Either works. They both fully explain what need to be due, either or. The first thing you're going to want to do here is come over to Options and then Show Reaper Resource Path in Explorer Finder. One note for you as a Reaper user, that's honestly the easiest and quickest way to hop to this path here. This is a lot of Reaper's preference files here. And so that just takes you right to that. Uh, we're going to want to back these up because these right now, fresh install Reaper, uh, these are the default settings. Now, if you've been using it, it's super important you back this up. Any custom templates you've made, your license key is in here. Um, lots of good stuff. We want to back up just as a precaution. So I usually just make a new folder, call it Reaper Backup. Um, I've done this on my personal Mac. I just keep them right there on my desktop so that I never have to think twice if I have a backup of a default Reaper. So go ahead and you want to copy, not drag. That is how you do it. You copy it over and now it's in both places. Um, the next thing you're going to do now is go ahead and just leave that open. This is the Reaper folder. Um, We're going to do this. So go to this install folder. Open it up. Don't drag the install folder. Open it up though and grab all these guys. We're going to drag that into the Reaper. Now it's going to ask you, um, some of these things already exist. We're going to hit apply to all and replace. And what this is doing is replacing a lot of preference files with the template. So that is a huge, huge part. Now go ahead and close that. We are going to quit Reaper and reopen it. Reaper is going to open. It's probably going to ask you to open a file. This is now the Eclipse template. There is one last thing you need to check that I'll say here. I would go to Option uh, Preferences, and I would double check that this enable Python for use under Rescript down here. Make sure that's applied. Um, you will need that to engage that Python software. So at this point, you are all installed. So I'm going to walk you through some of the key features here so that you can hopefully get a good understanding of how we're utilizing this powerful template. So the first button is going to be a new track. Uh, pretty simple. You just enter the number of tracks you want. Let's say I want 13. You hit apply. It creates 13 tracks for you just like that. So pretty simple button, but helpful. It can save you some time if you're creating a lot of tracks. Uh, this next button is my personal favorite and personal most used button. Uh, this is a CSV import. So think you are recording a show, massive amount of input. You want to be able to quickly label 128 channels. Let me show you how simple that is. We'll do a whole video walking through exactly how to set this up. So you can check that out on our channel. But for a simple example, what I've done is I've exported a input list as a CSV file. So you hit CSV import, and then I'm going to go down here to downloads the CSV example, which is an input list from a show I did a few weeks back. You go ahead and hit enter, and just like that, you'll notice it has made two racks full. It's pulled data on names from mic assignments, inputs, rack numbers, completely labeled, ready to go. It's also patched these for you. 
Um, you can see that it will patch them for you regardless of interface. So this is a powerful tool. I can't tell you how many times this has saved me at a show where I don't have time to enter 128 names, but I have time to save the input list as a CSV file. And just like that, um, it's that simple. Everything's labeled for you. Makes file management a breeze. No more track 128 when you're trying to find a file. So there's that button. Now, if you are not trying to do that, and you do just want your good old tracks live, virtual sound check. That's what these three buttons are. Now, these three buttons, we've done them in the common sizes, but you press any one of these, boom. 128 tracks. The difference with this is this actually has the outputs patch as well. So if you're a front of house guy or a monitor or broadcast guy and you're trying to use this for virtual sound check, uh, this is going to patch the input and the output for you. So you're ready to rock and roll as far as uh, playback goes, um, just like that. And so you can use that. Uh, this too has saved me uh, in a pinch to not think about it, to have tracks just like that, ready to roll, pick your size. Hopefully any old Tracks Live users will feel uh, comforted that they once again can put no time or thought while you're busy on a show into creating and patching stuff. You can just press a button and bada boom, it's all there. These next two buttons are huge. These are uh, arm and on arm all. Now, uh, it seems simple, but let me tell you, someone has been using this, especially when you're going back and forth between virtual sound checking and uh, maybe even doing, uh, maybe you had a rehearsal and you want to reprint like your uh, mix bus at the end. This is this is huge to be able to just toggle this right here. I think it's great to have there. So we've added those buttons for you so you can very quickly go back and forth. Uh, it doesn't matter what you have selected. So as you poke around, uh, this, these buttons are going to do everything. So... You can't mess it up. This next button, this record button, is huge. This is a really a safety net record. This toolbar up here is your standard record, play, pause, stop, all that that comes with Reaper. Um, this is an action list that's going to do a handful of things to make sure you're safe to record. It's going to arm all tracks for you. It's going to clear any loops you have. This is the way to record. I would press this record button every time. You're going to notice once you're rolling, it punches you in here. Uh, it's only recording the two tracks because that's the, I have the built-in mic selected, so that's all it's seeing. That is my computer being mad. I'm pressing the keyboard, but everything is disabled. That's space bar. You're completely safe. Uh, you ha have to come up here and have to press the stop button or control option command space bar will stop you. So that record is really going to keep you safe. Um, if you've ever space barred Pro Tools, who hasn't? But we've all been there. We've all uh, seen Pro Tools or another DAW be finicky or it's easy to bump a space bar. So this is going to keep you safe from that. You're going to have to definitely punch out. Yeah, so hopefully that feature helps you. And then this is a good old save button. Uh, and it needs a location right now. But yeah, so that's our main toolbar there. A couple other things you're going to notice. Uh, your space remaining on your drive is listed um, as well as your sample rate. If you do anything with time code, that button's still right there. But yeah, guys, this is the template. Um, feel free to let us know if you have any questions. Reach out to the email. Hopefully this helps you at your show, saves you time, and makes recording, virtual sound check, and archiving files a breeze and not a pain in the rear end. So thank you guys for tuning in, and I uh, hope this is helpful to you.